So my name is Luigi Montanez, and I'm going to talk about something called civic hacking. This is Aaron Schwartz. You might recognize his name. He has a popular blog, and he was a co-founder of Reddit. Aaron was also involved in civic hacking. Specifically, he helped liberate millions of documents from the US court system. Usually when you think of the judicial branch of the federal government, you think of the Supreme Court. But in reality, there are lower district courts in every single state, and there are 11 courts of appeals spread throughout the country. Now, all these courts means there's a lot of testimony being recorded and a lot of decisions being rendered. That's a lot of data, all of which by law is public domain. But this data is locked up in the system called PACER, which stores everything in PDF documents. To make things worse, PACER charges eight cents per page to download these PDFs. So a 40-page document would cost $5. And the search really sucks, so people end up buying many more PDFs than they usually need. So this is a situation ripe for civic hacking. Two years ago, Pacer went on a free trial at a couple libraries across the country, meaning it was free to download the PDFs at these libraries. So Aaron <laughs> went to one of these libraries, loaded a scraper script on a lab computer, and let it run for two weeks and transferred 20 million PDFs to his own EC2 server. The people at Pacer eventually figured this out. They freaked out, shut down the service, and called the FBI to investigate poor Aaron, which they did. But he was eventually cleared of anything because he was just dealing with public domain documents. So I work for Sunlight Labs. We're a group of developers and designers committed to making government more open. Specifically, we focus on transparency, the idea that government can be made better and more accountable when the data about its processes are made freely avail available to the public. All government data that isn't secrets or personally identifiable, we think should be made avail available online, in real time, and in machine-readable formats. Once we have this data, we can then build useful things on top of this data, apps that we need instead of what the government thinks we need. So we can have ideas that the government might never have thought of, let alone implemented itself. And all the code we write should be open source, free to be used, free to be modified. This way, governments and agencies can reuse our stuff for their own purposes. After all, we want them to be using our stuff. So let's look at some examples. Here's opencongress.org, which is what Congress's website should be. It takes raw data, the text of legislation, and the vote history of members of Congress and presents it in this easy to read and understand Rails app. Here's flyontime.us, which uses FAA data, historical FAA data, to tell you, to predict to you how late your flight's going to be, depending on weather conditions and other factors. And QuakeSpotter uses real-time data from the US Geological Survey to map earthquakes around the globe. StumbleSafely uses DC crime statistics to tell you which streets you should avoid at night when you're walking home from the bar. <laughs> and and Wayfinder is an augmented reality app for the Android, which points you to the, your nearest New York City subway station. So where do we find all this data? Well, a project I work on is called the National Data Catalog, which catalogs data sets and APIs from all levels of government, federal, state, and local. Let's look at one example of an API. Here's, uh, you know about dialing 911 for emergencies, and you dial 411 for inf information. Well, 311 is what you dial for city services, things like uh, potholes and broken traffic lights. Open311 is an API on top of that. Code for America is a project modeled after Teach for America. They're recruiting teams of developers to work in five cities across the country on open source software uh, next year, and they're taking applications right now. When JFK said that famous quote almost 50 years ago, S serving your country meant joining the military or going to the Peace Corps. But today, we can serve others by writing code using the tools we already have as software developers. For example, Intridia built a Creole to English translation app for aid workers in the aftermath of the Haiti earthquake. And they've built an oil reporting crowdsourcing app for what's going on in the Gulf right now. We Rubius love building our own TDD frameworks. And we do this because we care about the quality of our libraries and the quality of our tools. 
what if we also start caring about improving the quality of life for ourselves and for others? And we can do this through, using, through writing code. It's a wonderful gift. So consider civic hacking, writing software to make your community, your country, your world a better place. Thank you.